fertility consultant and a gynec endoscopic surgeon at Dr. Sudha Tandon Fertility IVF Gynec Endoscopy and Maternity Hospital in Chembur and Bashi. Today I am going to be speaking about male infertility, a lesser spoken about topic when it comes to infertility. Now it is interesting to note that males are responsible for 50% of the causes of infertility in a couple who is unable to conceive. So what are the causes of male infertility? So like the egg in the female, the sperm in the male is the gamete. It is responsible for fertilization of the egg so as to form the embryo or the baby eventually. So the causes can be genetic causes like Klinefelter syndrome which is a chromosomal abnormality, Y chromosome microdeletion, certain infections like mumps, tuberculosis, genital tract infections, exposure to toxins like heat exposure, exposure to heavy metals, smoking, radiation, chemotherapy, certain drugs, then certain problem with sexual dysfunction like erectile dysfunction or ejaculatory dysfunction. Then sometimes obstruction in the reproductive tract can also cause male infertility. Other causes can be diabetes, systemic illnesses like liver and renal illnesses, cancer, testicular causes like primary testicular failure which can cause azoospermia or absence of sperms and varicocele, cryptorchidism etc. So how do we evaluate the sperm count or the function of the sperm? So the main first primary investigation in a couple that comes to us for the male partner is the semen analysis. Semen analysis gives us a lot of information about the sperm count, the sperm motility, the morphology, the viability, the semen volume, etc. So a sperm count of less than 15 million per ml of ejaculate is called as low sperm count or oligospermia. If the progressive motility is less than 32% or the total motility is less than 40%, then this is low motility or asthenozoospermia. At least 4% of the sperms should be normal in structure or morphology and if the abnormality exceeds this, then it is called as teratozoospermia. And like I said earlier, if there are no sperms in the ejaculate, then it is azoospermia. Azoospermia is of two types, obstructive and non-obstructive. Obstructive is where there is a defect or an obstruction in the transport of the sperms from the testes where they are formed to the ejaculate where they are finally found in the semen. And the non-obstructive variety is where there is a defect in the production of the sperm in the testes. So, uh, how do you further treat male infertility? Suppose there is severe form of male infertility, severe oligospermia or azoospermia, then we need to do further evaluation by doing certain hormonal tests like testosterone, FSH, LH, prolactin levels in the male to know what is the cause of infertility. So, in severe forms of male infertility like severe oligospermia or azoospermia, we even check for the genetic status or genetic abnormality in the male partner so as to know whether it is safe to do IVF in these patients. An ultrasound of the scrotum can also give us a, a, an idea as to whether there is any abnormality, there is any obstruction, there is any swelling like varicocele or hydrocele in the male partner. Now how do you treat male infertility? Basically it depends mainly on the sperm count and the motility as well as the morphology but mainly on the sperm count. The first and foremost form of treatment in a mild case of male infertility is to give medical treatment and lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification includes weight reduction, healthy diet and regular exercise, quitting smoking, recreational drugs, reduction in alcohol intake, reduction of stress, reduction of caffeine intake, reduction of exposure to certain harmful environmental factors and work-related factors. 
Sperms can undergo oxidative stress or damage due to reactive oxygen species and this can be prevented or treated by giving antioxidants like coenzyme Q10, lycopene, L-carnitine, vitamin C, vitamin E, especially given for a period of 3 months, helps improve the motility and sperm function to a certain extent. Along with antioxidants and lifestyle modification in mild oligospermia, we advise the patients to undergo an intrauterine insemination or an IUI where the sperms are washed, centrifuged and the good motile sperms are then injected into the uterus of the female partner so as to increase the chance of fertilization and pregnancy. So what about in moderate to severe forms of male infertility or where the count is very low? So assisted reproductive technology in the form of in vitro fertilization and especially intracytoplasmic sperm injection is indicated in patients with very low sperm count or azoospermia. In intracytoplasmic sperm injection or ICSI, one sperm is injected into the egg and this is then kept in the incubator for fertilization and then the embryo is put back into the uterus of the female as a part of in vitro fertilization. So in forms of azoospermia, both obstructive and certain forms of non-obstructive azoospermia, it is possible to retrieve the sperms surgically from the testes or the epididymis of the patient using microsurgical techniques. These sperms which are retrieved via microsurgery are then used for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. These sperms can even be frozen. In fact, sperm or semen freezing is now indicated in a lot of patients, especially those who have very low sperm count or prior to cancer chemoradiation therapy and other forms of treatment as a form of fertility preservation for the males. So, assisted reproductive technology which is in the form of IUI or in vitro fertilization is an important way of treatment of male infertility. So do not delay treatment and always consult a fertility specialist to improve your chances of conception. Mm -hmm.